Like with any lumber, you like to remove the first inch or so uh, of the boards because that removes any of the checking. Uh, so I'm cutting that off of this poplar lumber here. I had 12 foot boards. Uh, and I like to also go ahead and mark out where each of the pieces are going to be to help me get an idea uh, to manage the lumber the best that I can so I don't ha have any waste. Uh, and then I use the miter saw to cut them to rough length. Uh, and then before I take them to the joiner, I actually like to remove as much material as I can because that makes flattening them uh, an easier and faster job. Uh, so now that I've removed some of the excess off of the width, I'll take it to the joiner to flatten one side, and then I'll run them through the planer to get them to the final thickness. After the boards are milled up to three quarters of an inch, uh, I like to take them down to their final width and length. Uh, for the joinery, I wanted something that's going to be pretty strong um, and that's going to last. So I'm using the housing joint uh, for the case. And what I'm doing here is cutting a 3 8 inch tongue on the uh, top and bottom, which are the horizontal pieces, uh, that will fit inside of a 3 8 inch groove that's on the vertical left and right cabinet piece. With the boards being so long, it was kind of hard to get an exact 3 8 inch tongue on these. So I'm using my router plane to take it down to the correct thickness, um, which is 3 8 of an inch. So now I'm cutting a 3 8 inch groove for the left and right vertical walls of the cabinet. Uh, and these are where the, the tongues will be sticking in when I glue it together you know, for the top and bottom. I forgot to mention that I'm making this cabinet for a friend and he wanted some LEDs to uh, be put in the top, uh, I guess the underside of the top. So I'm routing a 3 8 inch groove on this as well for the LEDs. I'm transferring the lines from the top to the bottom. I've got them side by side here uh, for the two vertical dividers. Um, and I'm using a 3 quarter inch dado stack at my table saw to cut the dados out for the dividers. And with the fence set perfectly, I just spin the board around and cut the other grooves with the dado stack as well. And while I had the dado stack in, I went ahead and cut the groove in the back on all four pieces for the back uh, plywood panel. Oh yeah, did I mention this is a pretty big cabinet? Uh, I had no room anywhere except the garage floor to, uh, to mock this up. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut the vertical dividers. I'm just using a jigsaw to cut it to, to rough size because they were too long for my miter station. And after I cut them to length here, I go ahead and mill them up to three quarters of an inch. I'm cutting a 3 8 inch groove on the top panel here um, for the wiring to exit out the back of the cabinet for the LEDs. Uh, so I'm just going to cut it down to a quarter of an inch in depth to match the same depth of the groove for the LEDs. And to cut the groove out, I'm just using my router plane. And this is probably the second most tedious part of this project, and it was drilling out the holes for the shelf pins. I'm using quarter inch uh, shelf pins for this, so I'm just using a quarter inch drill bit with the, uh, the collet on it to stop it for the perfect size. To keep everything lined up, I uh, laid the two vertical dividers side by side, uh, drew the center lines so they referenced each other, and then I put the, uh, the vertical left and right walls of the cabinet case uh, up next to these boards and struck a line for the center line on those to make sure that all four vertical walls had the uh, the same exact lineup for the holes. And one final look with everything clamped up before we start sanding uh, so it looks good. Uh, I sanded it with 80, 120 and stopping at 180 grit sandpaper uh, because I'm going to be staining this. With this being such a big glue up uh, I didn't have enough time or preparation to, to film everything because I would have been moving around so much I would have been out of frame. So I went ahead and clamped and glued this up off camera. Uh, but I thought I would go ahead and explain how I did it to maybe help you if you're gluing such a large piece and you don't really have the room for it like I don't. I had to use my garage floor, which first of all is not flat and not square. I have a crack down the middle, so it's uneven. So I was struggling with that. Um, but what I did was the top and the bottom have two dados to, for the vertical dividers. I put glue in those two first 
And then on one side, I put glue in the tongue and groove. Got those together, popped the side on, and then came over here and put glue in the tongue and groove on the other side of the panel, or the cabinet, and got that clamped um, to put everything together. My clamps weren't long enough, so I had to daisy chain pretty much everywhere I have a clamp. There's two. Um, so when I got everything glued together, it was roughly an inch and a half off square. So luckily I had the Irwin clamp and this other parallel clamp, I was able to pull it back into the square. With this being such a large piece, unless you have a perfectly flat and true work surface to clamp this up, you're gonna have issues of it not being in square. So luckily this was able to pull it back into square and now everything is dry. To add some stability to this cabinet, uh, I went ahead and put two screws in each vertical divider, top and bottom. So each vertical divider has four screws. This cabinet is going to have a sub top and a sub base. I've gone ahead and milled those up. Uh, I've milled them up to roughly an inch and a quarter thick uh, because the, my friend that wanted this cabinet made also wanted me to put a curve in the top like I did in my wall hanging cabinet. So this top is roughly an inch and a quarter thick. It's, it's got an overhang of one inch all the way around except it's flush with the back. And the bottom base uh, has a two inch reveal all the way around and flush on the back. Uh, it too is an inch and a quarter, but I'm gonna put a profile around three sides of that base with an OG bit on my router. Um, but for now, the next step is to mark out the curve on this top and cut it out at the bandsaw. Cutting such a wide board like this is gonna take some time and some patience. Uh, so it took me probably 10 to 15 minutes to cut this out. Uh, just took my time and stayed beyond the line. And to smooth the surface out, I first hit it with my number four hand plane uh, to get everything looking good. And then I sanded it with 80, 120, and 180 grit. To make the top look a little thinner, I hit it with a 45 degree chamfer bit on the underside of three sides of the top. To cover the visible joinery, I took some 3 quarter inch wide pieces that were roughly 1 eighth of an inch thick uh, and covered the outside of the cabinet front. And unless you have 100 clamps or so, uh, you're not going to be able to clamp it, so just use some blue tape to hold it in place until the glue dries. To hold the top into place, I'm just gluing it to the, uh, the cabinet sub top. When clamping the top down, it's pretty uh, pretty slippery with all the glue up there. So I had a combination square that I would keep referencing the sides to make sure the overlap was right. Uh, and then I would just use the quick clamps and my parallel clamps to hold it into place until it dried. And after the glue was dried, I flipped it over and glued the bottom on the same exact way. So that wraps up part one of this series. Uh, in the next video, we'll build the doors. Uh, finish it and install the LEDs. Uh, thanks for watching and stick around for part two. It'll be out in a few days.